I, wow, need a tan. Boy, I have really been inside. I just finished a podcast interview. I will share it. Okay, you are so loud. I will share that on my social media soon. Oh gosh, that's so bright. Um, and I just wanna show you my fit because uh, this is what I was wearing. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Now I'm going to change, finish packing and get a car and drive out to LA. I'm gonna sit in some traffic and then tomorrow is the finals for Mr. and Miss Supernational and I can't wait. This is our bathroom. This gives me New York vibes, this specifically. And here is the room. Nice little workspace. Okay, this feels so New York right now. Here, by the way, is my LOTD. Thrifted. I got this silk shirt from Savers and I'm pretty obsessed with it. And then these pants, Thrifted. I can't remember where, I think Savers too. But they're from The Loft. They're short because they're the petite size and then these shoe shoes are borrowed. Here's my steamer. Always put a towel over the front of these little portable ones so that when you steam, no water drips. L'Occitane, they sent me a little box. I've been wearing this over my, what do I do? I do vitamin C, I do hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and then I've been adding this on top. And then this I've been using as their night serum. So I've added this to my skincare lately and I have been loving it. And here, I'm a little sleepy right now, but um, here's my skin right now. I will be masking later with my red light therapy. I love that this is portable, still using it. I'm gonna see if I still have a link for this. These are amazing so far. And don't they just look, I don't know, they just look like sunset and sunrise to me. This right here though, oh my gosh. I just love, I love the smell of it. and. You need to try this, sample it, I don't know, go to the store. But the way that this feels, like the texture of this is just different. I also don't feel like it feels that heavy. They did not need to send me this. Okay, so thank you, first of all. Second of all, though, now I'm gonna have to start buying these. Great. And also these are the best little travel bag things. I just barely punctured a hole in one of them. I'm gonna buy another one, but these have saved me so many times. So I got these at TJ Maxx, and I don't know if they work, but I'm going to try them. And then I just have this Sally Hansen Mega Shine top coat we're going to try. And then this OPI. It's going to be for my toes. Um, let's glue our eyebrows. I decided on Perch, they have French inspired cuisine and live music. They're especially great for brunch. I ordered the chicken Caesar, which I would have showed you, but some guy kept talking to me and it was really awkward to try to take the video. After dinner, I went over my daily to-do list and then I started putting together small video clips that I published onto my YouTube shorts and on my pageant access Instagram of the Mr. and Miss Supernational contestants. Then it was time to take off my makeup, do a little bit of skincare, Soak my feet, paint my nails, and get to bed. a super quick workout now we're gonna go to Starbucks get a little snack because I want to come back and shoot a little bit of content here I want to shoot at their pool and then downstairs in their lobby area just because it's so beautiful why not and then I'll get ready for the show and head over it is a very very beautiful day Oh gosh, this reminds me that I didn't tan again, but this area of LA at the Biltmore is very close to Skid Row. Be really, really careful if you're traveling. Like, you should always keep your head on the swivel. Ready? Going down. 
downstairs and we're gonna go check out the pool. Yay. It is a maze to get here. To find the pool, you have to go all these hallways and you downstairs. This is scary. Okay. Alright, why am I going into the dark hallway? I can't be right. Okay, we're just gonna go this way. more because look at this look at this they have natural lighting and this space is stunning i'm gonna share with you my favorite red lip combo so i use the it cosmetics i think this is the color it girl but it's their bright red liner and i line my lips first with this after doing my makeup and i just kind of fill in my lips then I go in and you can see I love this because I broke it. This is the Spotlight Red. This is a matte lip color from Wet n Wild. It has a little bit more pink in it than I like. So that is why I then take this Italia Deluxe liner. And this is in the color Toast. And this is almost like a dark brick color. And so this brings like a little bit of the darkness that I like to the outside of the lip. I, I think it just like depends on like your skin tone and what you're going for but I found that like so many red lipsticks kind of still go pink and I just want like a true red but adding more of like a brown tone for me seems to help and then of course I always make sure before you leave so I don't get lipstick on my teeth mm -hmm. there we go we're ready oh OTD which you can barely see I'm throwing Excedrin into my bag because this hairstyle can give me a headache to call my car here we go i will show you more later here's how the nails turned out it was a little rough they're gonna work Just in case you don't know who all my friends are here right now, um, please tell them all your handles so they can subscribe to you as well. I pay Adam G all across my social media accounts, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Brian Javier, pageant analyst. Uh, just write Brian Javier and I should pop up. You will find me almost anywhere as The Sovereign, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Hi, everyone. Yay! Friends, follow friends. <laughs> I am obsessed with this space. I feel like, I don't know, I'm at swim week, which I've never been, and I love it. And this is just the perfect vibe for a springtime, early summer pageant. Phone in my hand because technically I'm supposed to be in a chair. <laughs> I want you're, snacks. You're gonna make it. I want snacks too. <laughs>
you're ready for your question, take a deep breath. What is the most polarizing issue in the United States today, and what is your stance? To extinguish hatred and to fill it with love. There are so many issues in the world right now that we are seeing, and we want to make sure that it is all resolved with love in our hearts. When we look at any issue, where is the where's the root? It is always not loving yourself, not loving your neighbor, not loving anyone around you. Let's keep our hearts open, let's keep our minds open, and let's be compassionate. Be a fierce leader with a compassionate heart. And as the next title holder, I will make sure that I will make sure that I'm a beacon of light for everyone to do the same, to be able to become a leader as well. Any issue that you are passionate in, make sure that you have a stance in it. For example, domestic violence awareness, I will make sure that that is a platform that is shine the light on, as well as any platform that anybody has, and make sure that you are able to take that light inside you, and make sure that you are able to spread love in your heart. I believe facing women's rights, the most polarizing issue is the abortion laws that are happening in different states. In the state of South Carolina right now, they are trying to pass a bill that makes it so that women that are six weeks pregnant cannot get an abortion afterwards. And many times women can't even get, uh, don't even know that they're pregnant at that point. So I think it's very important that women still have their rights and it's still are able to um, decide what they do with their bodies. Women's rights. And as an advocate for endometriosis awareness, I've been diagnosed since the age of 16. And I do understand how chronic pain can take me away from being productive every single month. So the best thing for us to do is make sure women have the freedom to our own rights, to our own reproductive rights. Some, for me, for endometriosis, one of my symptoms is infertility. And even though I may not be able to have a child one day, I know that being a mother is one of the greatest things. And I know that America could move forward and make sure that women's rights can be strictly just for women. That is a very deep question. <laughs> Me oh my. But so my platform is a mental health awareness. I am a very firm believer of it, and I think that everyone needs to just come together as one and be united and love each other and support each other and make sure that no one is ever alone in any type of situation, and I will put my foot down about that because I do believe that no one should ever be alone or ever think that they're ever alone because there is always going to be somewhere, someone, not somewhere, I mean, I'll be there, but... There is always going to be someone out there that is willing to give you an olive branch or a helping hand. I believe the most polarizing issue in the United States today is the fact that people don't accept each other. They don't have community and they don't celebrate each other for what they are doing in their environment. The fact that we are separated and the fact that we're divided, it's so unedicated and we don't leave room for people to have space and creativity. We need to promote and encourage individuality. Do you think toxic masculinity is creating an epidemic of loneliness in the United States? That is a very good question. I'm really big on toxic masculinity. I believe that it is our job as men to go towards the forefront of bringing that to the forefront and making sure that we understand and address that it's okay to tap into your most feminine energy. Okay, I wanna make sure that you guys understand the importance of demonstrating a balance between masculine and feminine energy. That is my take on that. I absolutely believe that toxic masculinity is creating an epidemic of loneliness. Um, I think a lot of people have put up a wall. I feel like, you know, when you look around society today, it's so much men versus women. You know, we're not working together and a lot of that has to do with a lot of insecure men who might lack purpose in life. And I know the pandemic was very hard for a lot of people and a lot of people had to search within, but in the society we create today, men rarely look within themselves. So now, as we're at post-pandemic, a lot of people don't know how to, to navigate the, the social situation that we live in currently. And now we have a lot of men who I think are just scared to open up, scared to be vulnerable, and what that creates is a wall. 
People can't get in. People can't understand you. People can't feel you. The modern man needs to be vulnerable. He needs to be emotional. He needs to be open. He needs to be a listener. That way you can listen to the voices of the people around you because that's only going to make you a better man. And it's only going to make people gravitate towards you as not only a leader, but somebody who can lead their community and lift everybody else up around them. Yeah, I would say so. Definitely in the state of Florida, I've known a lot of people that are so used to like kind of a gender bias of how things are normally built. I think it's more of like, oh, I have to pay, she can't be working, I have to do it. Like, like it's more of like, I think more commonality of not spreading your emotions that way or talking with your significant others or your friends. I think creates this different, like that. <laughs> definitely creates this imbalance in terms of who you are as a man. I think there's a current newer generation, especially in the entertainment industry, where we will talk about our emotions. But I do think toxic masculinity has become this overriding problem overall. And I think, uh, yeah, especially in Florida, I definitely have noticed that people are very unwilling to talk about these things or saying things are labeled in a very gay way, which I think in itself also causes another issue. But I do think toxic masculinity itself has become a bigger issue. I definitely don't think it's one of the biggest issues, but I do think in terms of healing a nation as a whole, I think that's one of the things we really have to kind of get rid of overall. Um, our mascul toxic masculinity is affecting us here in the United States for many reasons. Because um, we have a lot of prejudice and stigmas. And I'm sorry, my English is not good. It's my third language. But um, we live with a lot of prejudice and stigmas. And the most important is to show our feelings. Men doesn't have the possibility to show feelings here. You cannot cry, you cannot show your feelings, because people see you less. It's time to embrace our diversity, it was our men too, because we have feelings. We can cry, we can be vulnerable. And the most important is respect others. Because if you respect and you give love, you have everything. The, the base of everything is love. So it's better that men, and also women, delay this toxic um, femininity or masculinity and live your dreams, not your fears. Most definitely, most definitely. As a masculine man, I feel like there's a lot of pressure that it is put on to you to be the masculine one in the room. And sometimes it affects you mentally when you're always thinking that you must be the strongest. And sometimes it's not okay for you to be, you know, weak or vulnerable to certain situations. It's a tough one. Yeah, I would say it does, because I think it's really misunderstood at the same time. Um, you could be toxic, but at, you know, at the end of the day, deep down, you're probably one of the most insecure people, or uh, have a lot that you're on your shoulders. And I think with that, showing men how to show their emotions and be vulnerable can fix a lot of this toxic you know, masculinity that we got going on. So I think the root of the problem is a lot of these men are just scared to open up and show who they truly are. I think that toxic masculinity is absolutely creating this barrier for men to be able to speak out about how they're truly feeling. We are creating this culture where men don't feel comfortable to be able to share their true emotions, to be able to share how they're truly feeling. I'm serving in the Air Force as a second lieutenant, and I, I have personally experienced where we are not able to truly show, oftentimes, how, how we feel. We are not able to truly give our, our true emotion out at all times. And so I, I think the loneliness is creating this kind of culture and this kind of isolation for men. Hopefully we can change that. Hopefully we can make it a, a more commonplace thing for men to do. First of all, thank you, uh, Super National, for giving me the opportunity to represent my home state of Arizona. I'm forever grateful. And when it comes to toxic masculinity, I, at the end of the day, I'm a mama's boy. And so I've always seen both sides of men and women. And growing up, being with the, the manly man, being with, you know, their version of what masculinity is, I think, in the end, really hasn't led to the best mental health. When it comes to men's mental health, I think for the longest time we've allowed ourselves to not hold one another accountable, uh, not allow one another to be emotional. Uh, I'm a very emotional person, and I try not to, uh, <laughs> you know, break down in front of my brothers. But at the end of the day, if we want to change the culture for men and end toxic masculinity, 
we got to be able to cry and we got to be able to uh, express our emotions and a great way to learn is from women. Women have excellent emotional intelligence. Women are the backbone of this country and uh, I'm a woman. So, it's the final one. It's the final Our second runner up is Miss Iowa. Congratulations Miss Iowa. Our first runner up is Miss New York! Congratulations, New York! Your Miss Supra National United States 2023 is Nebraska! Your second runner-up is Mr. Colorado. Our first runner-up is Mr. Vermont. Your Mr. Supranational United States 2023 is Arizona. exciting development for me. I just feel so much more productive at night. Same. Here we are. Today is a very special day. Tell them what today is, Brooke. Today, five years ago, we competed. Did you have to say five? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Miss well, USA? We did it. Cheers, Cheers to, to us. us. <laughs> I was in the group like a little Girls, cheers <laughs> to us. I wish this was more sweeter. I was kind of wondering how this would be like. I know. I wanted it to be more sweet. The boat was a little hard, but also, I mean, it's probably just been sitting in here for a long time. I know. Danny invited me to Mr. and Miss Supernational United States. Yes. And it was a vibe. Congratulations, Nebraska. Nebraska. How weird is our fifth year anniversary in Nebraska and Nebraska? Ask Sarah if she knows her. Because mm. if she's from, I have a friend here that is friends with her on Instagram. How do I open this? Like, how do I? They're all okay. They're strong. I know. That's what I thought too. They smell very strong. Right? Five dollars for a stack. Inflation. Congrats to us. I'm gonna put on my PJs. Whoop whoop. I'm back. I'm ready. I'm exhausted. Probably slept about two hours. Now it's time to go to Nashville. Let's go. Airport fit. Thank you. Oh, Sally. Thank you for my snacks. My eyes look so bloodshot. I'm so sleepy. Mm -hmm.